community. <coughs> in the second stage, we interview uh, community leaders, and this is the <coughs> first goal, you know, trying to understand the trends uh, in the community. And we also interview uh, community members. Um, we did 26 uh, focus groups, and we are doing the 11 more as we are beginning to finalize our, our, our um, data collection. And we have broken down the uh, data among the relations, as you know, the, each one of these groups have very specific medical needs, um, adults and, and seniors. The third stage uh, is the residential survey, and this is where um, our colleague right there is being entertained by the SPSS and statistical analysis. Um, 1,200 interviews, and we have asked questions in four uh, areas. Um, Relationship in the community and the city, uh, reported on uh, health and you know, physical and mental health, uh, health knowledge, and demographic data. And we have begun to see that a lot of people, they, they know a great deal about how to sustain their health. Then the question is, why is it that they are not practicing what they are betting on? Olive oil, for instance, um, they all know how wonderful it is to eat olive oil with your salad. Any idea why they are not eating olive oil like you do, right? Yeah. Grocery stores are very different. Olive oil is not rarely found in some of these stores. And what is the other component that will make a huge barrier to accessing olive oil. Cost. Cost. It's very expensive. Um, so they have a lot of um, health knowledge, um, but practicing it becomes a, a, a problem. In, I thought I could have last, yes, there it goes. The last component is the community inventories. And this is literally people walking around with um, an instrument and collecting information about what they are seeing. So gang graffiti, uh, missing trees, uh, sidewalks that are in disrepair, um, people smoking, you know, people hanging out, and all of that is going to give us an idea about the social as well as the physical shape of the community. If we are doing this two set of inventories, prepared foods in restaurants, and unprepared food in grocery stores, and we are also collecting data on the type of medical services available uh, in the community. It is really amazing to see how many dental services there are, but there are very few physical services, and that is um, beginning to bother me. Why is it that dental services are preferred over physical services? If you have a clue, please uh, talk to me. It will, it will help me to sleep tonight. Um, so here is the point of um, involving uh, students in, in the process, and this is something that for me is, is I treasure this part. Um, as you know, that when you write papers for your professors, the crazy people that they are, how many hours you spend preparing a paper? I know you wait until three hours before the paper is due and all of that, but they still, right? You invest a great deal of time intellectual creativity and effort. It's so sad that traditionally those papers actually go to my file cabinet for a year. Then I recycle them. And that's it. That's the end of it. You get a grade. And the paper goes into recycling. Yay! <laughs> I want to disrupt that process. Uh, so since about two years ago, I've been designing every single course that I teach that's a link to community uh, services. So whatever you do in, in, in the papers that we produce uh, in, in classes, they are turned immediately to community uh, use. I am not sure how much use there is um, for some of the information that we are creating, but at least someone else is reading it besides me. And, and that is one goal that I'm pursuing with this. So <clears throat> the investigators, that picture is not supposed to be there. It has beard and you know fun and all of that. It's not supposed to be that much fun. So the investigators have been junior investigators have been involved in helping me to design uh, some of these instruments and test the instruments, go out in the community and see if they're actually working. 
They have also been involved in learning how to analyze qualitative data and quantitative data using either Atlas DI, which is a qualitative uh, uh, program, or SPSS, which is uh, what Corey has been working on so far, right? Yep. Right. Okay. We have also been reporting, and this is something that both of you have actually experienced, uh, reporting in class, uh, reporting to the community uh, folks. Um, so whatever we produce, we bring it and report it to them. And we have also been going to conferences. Um, there have been several colleagues that sent abstract to professional conferences and presented our work um, at academic uh, um, places. This is not only good for you in terms of your own academic development, but it's also great for the communities as well because you are providing them a voice. Um, so you are saying there are problems that we need to face them. Right? Preliminary findings, and this is really, really very preliminary because we are just finishing um, data collection. Some of the thoughts that we have been having is that, of course, there is indeed very limited information about the communities, just the communities, let alone the information about immigrants living in those communities. That is something that is it's becoming sort of like a, a very important issue. Main health concerns that we have been seeing, depression, uh, dental care and uh, primary care. In some of the focus groups that we have uh, conducted, um, we have asked, uh, "What do you do for fun?" You know, to adolescents. Uh, and if I ask you, "What do you guys do for fun?" You probably have a laundry list, right? The secret one and the open one, the one that you can share with your parents and the ones that you can ask, right? <laughs> Down there is a little bit different. And six thirty in the winter, nine o'clock during the summer is the unofficial curfew. It is very, very hard to see people around. And you ask them then, when you are at home, what do you do? What do you think you do? TV. TV. What else? What do you do when we're watching TV? You eat a lot. You see it, right? Well, you can, you can begin to make the connections there, right? Um, we have asked about treatments. Um, in a focus group that I ran, um, there were the 12 people uh, sitting around the table. And how many of you know someone with some symptom of depression? About eight of them. And how many of you have actually feel depressed at some point? Actually, all of them raise their hand. And what do you mean by depression? Then we started to talk about the symptoms. And well, you know, they, they actually know the symptoms very well. And then the last question, how many of you are actually seeing someone or are in some sort of treatment? Yes, I mean, none. You already know when I ask that question because I'm being serious coming up, right? Um, barriers to healthcare, and this is something that we have already known uh, before, insurance, uh, time, lack of services, and so on. But <coughs> what we are trying to do is to explain some of these patterns that we are seeing. Remember what I said before, the material component and the subjective component? So here it comes. So at the social and economic status level, we already know that the you know, price uh, of the labor is not uh, as good as you know, the price of the labor uh, outside of those communities. Um, so that is already making some big differences. Um, but we are also seeing that access to medical services tend to be a little bit different than for the rest of us. Our the politicians have been saying out of their lungs, you know, those immigrants are depleting our resources. Well, when we ask the immigrants themselves, where do they prefer to go? They are not going to the public places. That is not their first choice. They actually prefer to go a local, to see a local physician because they treat them well, it's fast, and they speak the language. But what is the problem? The extended services and also the price. The, the cost of seeing a local physician without insurance is very, very high. So if you're earning seven dollars an hour, if you're lucky, but the doctor is asking you to pay eighty-five dollars just to see her, or you know. 30 or 4 more dollars just to do a complete count. 
um, that's, that's the end of your week, right? And you still have to eat, pay rent, transportation, and so on. So it becomes a, a, a huge uh, a huge 